Welcome to a video from the digitallifestyle.com. In this video, I wanted to quickly show off running Android apps on Windows 11. There's quite a few guides out there, but I thought I'd just actually show you how well it works. I'm running this on a Surface Laptop 2, and um, and here you can see I have the Allo Camera app, uh, which is Android app. And if I go to the Start menu, you can see here that I've got Outlook. The Microsoft Launcher and I also installed Philips Hue on here as well. So these appear just as standard applications in Windows. If you didn't know any different you would say that these are um, these are just normal Windows apps. It uses a Windows subsystem for Android in the background and I'll talk about that in a minute. But as you can see here I can uh, here's a uh, the uh, Hue app, I can turn my lights on and off. It's real time, the lights are going on and off as I as I do that. There's no lag or anything like that. And I can still use the, the laptop for other stuff as well. It's not particularly sluggish or slow. We can have a quick look in Task Manager and have a look at uh, what resources that's taking. So there you can see the subsystem. So it's running just about a gig. Um, and uh, 200 meg there, so it's not, not a huge amount, especially when you see what Teams is <laughs> using. So this runs, the subsystem runs it in the background. Now there's a couple of options. One is to have it always running, so when you launch your Android apps, they just work. The other option is to have it so that um, it comes on demand. So that takes a bit longer to set up the first or run the first application. So here's the, the settings for the subsystem. You can see I've got it on as needed. So the first time I launch an, an Android app, there's a bit of a delay while it, it takes about 10 seconds for it fires up subsystem, or I could have it continuous. So that takes that, that gig of RAM will always be used by the subsystem. So if you've got enough RAM, then you can just leave it running. There was a few hoops to, uh, to go through to get this, and uh, there's loads of different guides out there. For me, it involved... Uh, First of all, you've got to get the Windows subsystem for Android from the Microsoft Store. You need to be uh, in US, um, your location settings need to be US, your region settings. So, um, quick change of region settings, a reboot, and downloaded that. The way that Microsoft want you to test that is then with the Amazon Store, but um, I can't fake a Amazon Store from the UK uh, it needs a US, it's only US, so there's a few hoops to do that. So what I did is I downloaded this tiny ADB uh, tool, which I just installed that, and then um, it was as simple as just doing a side loading. So let me, uh, so I've actually side loaded these apps. So these apps aren't from the Amazon App Store, they're side loading. So there's various issues with that. You're not, you've got to get it from an APK mirror site, so you need to know what you're doing. But, but that's what I did, and um, so I've just done ADB Connect with the IP address there, and I then do ADB, uh, let's see what the inst the APK name is, I've got, uh, I'm going to install the, um, so I'm going to install the Sonos app, which is that one there. So I'm going to do ADP, ADB install, and I can install that. Now, Google Play services don't work on this, so any apps that require Google Play services, something like Google Maps, for example, or uh, YouTube Music, or something like that, you're going to need your Google Play services. And there are some guides out there. I'm not going to go into this on this video. These ones I'm using uh, don't need it. Right, okay, so that's installed that. So I can now use the app with um, my Sonos, uh, which is better than the the Sonos app that uh, for for Windows. So it has its advantages, especially useful um, for things that don't. You know, the Arlo app. Um, they, they have a website, which is okay, but I prefer the app. You don't have a, a good app for Windows, so you, you can use third party ones and so on. But anyway, this one just works and I didn't have to do anything clever apart from what you, you just seen installing it and uh, it works. What I was surprised about is how well it works. It's nice and smooth. The integration with the rest of Windows is great. It just looks exactly the same as um, 
uh, as a standard Windows app. I mean, it's not quite got the look and feel, but as you can see, um, the screen's resize depends on the application. So um, some just look like Android apps, but like you can see, some will resize. It, it thinks it's a big tablet effect, effectively. But and as as the surface is a touch screen as well, I can use the touch screen. I'm using the touch screen on there, and that all works fine as well. This will work for mobile games as well. You can get as long as they don't require too much Play Store integration. Uh, for the Halo one, I think it did ask for Play Store integration with to do exports. It said you can't export a video clip because it's not integrated, which which is fine. So as you see, they work. Uh, it's not putting too much tax on the device, um, and um, yeah, it's very handy. So if you can afford the RAM, just leave the subsystem running, and you've got access to these apps we you need. If you've got slightly less RAM, then you've got that sort of 10 second delay while it loads up the subsystem. But apart from that, they work just as you do on your phone. So hopefully Microsoft can do more with this, it will release to more markets soon. Uh, and then you'll be able to test this from other regions and Amazon, the built-in Amazon store that will come with this will have more applications in there as, as well uh, once this goes available to everybody. So thanks for watching this video. You can find out more at thedigitallifestyle.com.